Good morning, Miss Flock. Good morning, Mr. Callender. Good morning, Della. Uh, uh, I'm Hilary, Mr. Callender. He calls all the new girls Della. It makes him feel like Perry Mason. Perry who? <laughs> now I know I am getting old. Perry Mason, the greatest lawyer of them all, and his loyal secretary, Della Street. Loyal and beautiful. He's living in a time warp. Well, some sort of warp, anyway. <laughs> Every Sunday. Just when you thought Perry's clients were done for, a witness would leap from the body of the court and start confessing like mad. I can't stand it anymore. I did it. I put the python in his pajamas. And I... <laughs> and I'm glad. You're giving Hillary quite the wrong idea. Oh, Miss Flood, where's your sense of drama? No. The mysterious case of 42 Balderston Lady. Now, what really went on in that three-bedroom semi? A menage a trois that got out of hand? A spy ring operating from the garden shed? 87, moving into a home. <laughs> you see, Della, I just hope you can stand the excitement. Oh, my boyfriend says it takes a lot to get me excited. <laughs> All right. Well, you just keep your eye on that door. There'll be gun runners, bank robbers, diamond smugglers, all screaming for my services. All fighting over last month's homes and gardens. Goodness, I never thought Pinner was like that. A hotbed, Della. A hotbed. Has uh, Mr. Hinty in yet? No, not yet, Mr. Callender. you like him. He thinks he's Perry Como. <laughs> once, Della, once a solicitor was entitled to some respect. Oh, uh, when was that, Mr. Callender? <laughs> I shall be in my inner sanctum. Oh, and one more thing. Welcome to the firm, Hilary. <laughs> What's it my fault, Mr. Callender? Honest, I swear to you, it wasn't my fault. What are you doing here? She was just lying there, all still in that blood seeping out of her white dress. And there was this kitchen knife plunged deep into her heart. I swear to you, Mr. Callender, I never touched her. M my prints are on the knife, sure, but I, I couldn't have. I just couldn't have. <laughs> How are your exams? Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Landlord was a bit of a pig, though. I know, it always was. But that's where the money is. Dad, there are more important things in the world than making money. Oh, I agree. There's spending it, counting it, admiring it, talking to it. You know <laughs> what I mean. That's not what I'm studying for. I know. You want to help everybody. Well, <laughs> don't the middle classes deserve help? All they can get, comrade, all they can get. <laughs> By the way, how did she get stabbed? Ah, well, it was my knife. My prints were all over it. Well, I'd been making kebabs that afternoon, so whoever used it had to know that I'd been chopping meat. <laughs> the butcher. The butcher did it! Yes! <laughs> we are looking for a homicidal butcher. <laughs> Somewhere out there is a butcher with blood on his hands. You should have been a criminal lawyer, Dad, you know that? <laughs> a lot of my clients reckon I am. <laughs> <laughs> I found a legal loophole and crawled through it. You're not seriously thinking of letting him join us, are you, Mr. Callender? <laughs> oh, Miss Flood, let me storm your barriers and drown in your embrace. Oh. Very poetic. <laughs> Would you sign that, Mr. Callender? No. How's university, Jamie? Oh, I'm doing fine with the drugs and orgies, Miss Flood. It's this damn studying I can't get the hang of. <laughs> Mr. Callender? 
it's Hillary. Yes, Hillary. You know you have an appointment with the Mrs. Angel at ten o'clock. Yeah, it's probably some crinkly old biddy who wants to leave her entire wealth to the Jack Russell Preservation Society. <laughs> well, she's come early, Mr. Calendar. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary. Go. The moose. Go on. Go and see your sister. Test your theories out on her. She's more interested in stretch marks than Karl Marx. <laughs> anyway, see you later, Dad. Bye. I'll make sure he leaves the premises. Be careful. He's got his black cap on. <laughs> Hillary, ask Mrs. Angel to come in, will you? Please come in. I'll, I'll go in. Sorry, silly me. It's just through there. <laughs> Mrs. Angel? Yes, hello. Oh, please, take a seat. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, can I take your coat? What, it's a down payment? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I make jokes when I'm nervous. Ah. Not very good ones. I wish you wouldn't be nervous. Hmm, so do I. I've never seen a solicitor before. Well, bad as that, is it? Didn't expect that. Oh, that's uh, just me when I was a young lawyer, you know. <laughs> Get off, it's Perry Mason. <laughs> <laughs> you recognised it. No one under 35 ever does. Hey, there's writing on it. Can I have a look? Please. Cheers, Alec. Let's crack open a case sometime. Perry, he didn't write that. A uh, solicitor's joke. I hope you don't laugh at us. Us? People like me, customers. No, <laughs> Clients. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Angel. <laughs> the secrets of solicitors' offices are sacrosanct, like the confessional. Except it'll cost me more than a few Hail Marys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Angel. Uh, that's a lovely name, by the way. Ah, well, that's what I've come to talk to you about. Your name? In a way, you see, I'm married to Mr. Angel. Yeah, that's the way it normally works. <laughs> Except, curiously enough, in Iceland. The woman hangs on to her maiden name there. It's probably too cold to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's an old song, a very old song. You wouldn't know it. I married an angel. <laughs> Have you heard I married an angel? Yes, that, that's it. How on earth did you know that? My mum and dad. They're pillars of the local operatic society. I know more show songs than I know pop songs. <laughs> Not very trendy, is it? Oh, it is for me. Uh, it's my spiritual home, Broadway. <laughs> Ealing or Cricklewood? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> small talk. No. Um, the pajama game. Sorry? Small talk. It's from the pajama game. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I see. <laughs> yes. Now then, of the I sing. Oh, uh, George Gershwin. Ah, that's right. Babes in Arms? <laughs> oh. Uh, Rogers and Hart. No, R Rogers and Hart. This <laughs> will fox, yeah. Divorce me, darling. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't my tactful on me, was it? I'm sorry. No, it's not your fault, honest. Oh, sh sugar. And I was doing so well. <laughs> Still. You would bury must have women crying their eyes out all the time. No, 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 no. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Here, have one of mine. <laughs> you probably think I'm really pathetic. No, 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 no. <laughs> when I was a little, uh, little boy in Glasgow, my grandmother gave me a cowboy outfit <laughs> with all the trimmings, you know, and a gun. <laughs> the very first time I wore it, I slipped and fell down the steps of our tenement block. And I ripped the outfit <laughs> and bent the revolver. Well, I sat on the steps and I bawled my head off and my grandmother. She said, Alec, we lamb. Cowboys don't cry. I said, I'm not a bloody cowboy. <laughs> and neither are you, Mrs. Angel. So you cry away. What did your granny say? <laughs> she took me upstairs and belted me. <laughs> she never was one for cursing. You're very nice for a... Solicitor? You're Scottish, aren't you? Oh, well, you noticed. <laughs> what I mean is, what are you doing down here? Well, I had an uncle who was a lawyer down here, so I took articles with him. I hope you put them back. <laughs> we seem to be straying, Mrs. Angel. Yes, it's a pest divorce, isn't it? Aye, I've done hundreds of them. <laughs> now then, 
How long have you been married to Mr. Angel? Kevin? Mm -hmm. Nearly eight years. Yes. We've been going out since we were seven. He was my first boyfriend. Well, I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I swapped him from Janice Grimwood for my new skipping rope. <laughs> I loved that skipping rope. <laughs> no, that's not fair. I did love Kevin. Even before I knew what love was. Is that gibberish? No. You're doing fine, Mrs. Angel. Anyway, Mr. Angel, my childhood sweetheart, has been having an affair. Ah. How did you find out? Oh, the usual. Kept coming home at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., all hours reeking of guilt. He said he'd been working late. And you suspected otherwise, huh? He's a milkman, Mr. <laughs> Do you know who, um... Good old Janice Grimwood. <coughs> she didn't even give me back my skipping rope. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are they uh, still... Um... Yes, he's still having his milky way with her. <laughs> and don't be sorry. It was all going real some cotton anyway. We just grew apart. We didn't have any biscuits, but I found this chocolate cake in the filing oh. Thank you, Hilary. Uh, just, just leave it here, will you? Hilary. Uh, Hilary. <laughs> I expect Miss Flood is missing you. Hilary. <clears throat> oh, I'll be going then, shall I? <laughs> oh, if you need anything else, you know where I'll be. Cheerio. often cry like that, Miss Flood. Those stains on his carpet are not coffee, Hilary. They're mascara. <laughs> I think it's his eyes. You can't hold anything back from eyes like that. Anyway, divorce can be a very emotional business, so they tell me. Would you file that, please, bottom drawer? How did you know it was a divorce? You can read it on their faces. Criminals look furtive. House buyers look worried. Divorce clients just look sad. Thank heavens for people whose names begin with a Z. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. I don't think you've met Mr. Callender's partner. Mr. Henty, this is Hillary. Delightful. Did you and Mrs. Henty have a nice weekend, Mr. Henty? <laughs> Annabelle spent all her time soldering empty baked bean tins to old air fresheners as a symbol of our polluted society. I had to make all my own meals. <laughs> Mr. Henty's wife sculpts. Oh. So, what did you eat, Mr. Henty? A lot of baked beans, Hilary. <laughs> Talking of food, I think it behoves me, as the sociable end of Semple Calendar and Henty, to escort you to a nearby hostelry for a traditional welcome lunch. Oysters, I venture. Oh, dear, I've gone and brought me sandwiches. <laughs> well, don't worry, Miss Flood will eat those, won't you, Miss Flood? Of course. <laughs> Isn't it what I'm here for? <laughs> And perhaps if I saved the crusts, Mrs. Henty could weld them all together and earn herself an Arts Council grant. Mm. But you've never tried oysters. Oh, then you shall. Sometimes I think I owe all my youthful vigour to those plates of oysters that are regularly set before me. Pearls before swine. I'm sorry, Miss <laughs> Nice place to dine. Oh, yes, indeed. Right. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've got a rather nasty industrial case at about... Well, but it shouldn't take too long. Chappie caught his tie in one of those 24-hour film processing machines. Have there been any further developments? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, Hilary, see you at lunchtime. <laughs> I've got a client in Pentonville. He'd appreciate that to hack his way out. Now then, you were telling me about your marriage. Well... Everyone knew we were going to get married, even at school. I held a mock wedding in the playground. Kevin made me stuff a pillow up my dress so it looked like the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough area. The first years were fine. They were fun, really. 
Then I started seeing that Kevin's ideas of what a wife was for were just a bit different from mine. How do you mean? Well, Kevin thought women were made about five foot five, so they just fit neatly into ironing boards. <laughs> I felt like a washing machine. I'd go on for years, provided I had regular servicing. So I started rebelling. Kevin couldn't handle that. So he traded me in for last year's model. Janice Grimwood? As was. What about you, Mrs. Angel? What do you do? Hmm? I take it there are no little angels? No. No, I teach at Eldon High. I'm a PE teacher. A PE teacher? <laughs> you don't look like a sadist. Pensane <laughs> 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 incorpore sano, huh? Sorry? A healthy mind and a healthy body. Latin. <laughs> Adonna kebab taram and hummus. <laughs> Greek. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell me, um, how do you feel about divorce? Well, I'll miss the double cream on Saturdays. Why do you always ask so many questions? No, Mrs. Angel, not always. It's just that I find you interesting. Interesting? Is that what I am? I think you are. Very interesting. Eight years of marriage to someone I must have loved once. Just to end up being told I'm an interesting case. Not much, is it? No, I, I didn't mean that. I did you... love him, Mr. Calendar. Oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Mrs. Angel, you're young, you're attractive. You'll love again. <laughs> I know it looks like it, but it's not the end of the world, you know. Perhaps you could put it down to experience, huh? What? Some bloody experience. Can I ask you, Mr. Calendar, have you ever had, um, what would you call it, marital difficulties? Me? Well, no, I can't say that. Then that. don't tell me about experience, because you don't really know. You may have all your law degrees, but you don't really understand. Mrs. Angel... I'm sorry, I shouldn't have come. I'm not going to be one of your interesting cases, Mr. Callender, to laugh about at the solicitor's social. But here's one for your top table. Janice Grimwood's having a baby, and it really is going to look like the milkman. I'm glad you've got a happy marriage, Mr. Callender. Well done. But nothing lasts forever. Except maybe that chocolate cake. <laughs> Mrs. Angel. <coughs> Mrs. Angel. Mrs. Angel. When you get struck off, may I have your desk blotter set? Mine to be down. <laughs> Sprinter, is she? She's a gym mistress. Oh, Alec. Oh, no, please don't. No, there are... <laughs> there are images whizzing around my head that wouldn't be allowed to touch me. <laughs> what, at 10.15 in the morning? It's always midnight in here. <laughs> we were getting on so well. I liked her, Miles. I really liked her. Alec? Well, you know what I mean. As a person. Well, there are plenty more sardines in the soup. <laughs> I say, what a little puppet that Hillary is. Quite the little innocent. Well, let's hope she remains that way. Doesn't feel the long arm of the law. <laughs> Haven't you got any work to do? Only Mrs. Chip Chase. You know, if it moves, sue it. She probably wants to give God a writ for not sending us a proper summer. <laughs> Well, Alec, if you have any more emotional clients, you know what to do, don't what? you? Ask for something in advance. Go back to your sewer, Miles. Hey, Azo, get that down here. Yeah. Thanks, Debs. Do you know, there are more calories in one of these than in a jam donut. Yes, but these are boozy calories. They don't hang about like your jam donut calories. <laughs> they whiz about all over the place. A little bit here, a little bit there, so you hardly even notice. Rubbish. It cheered you up, though, didn't it? Yeah. Thanks, big sis. So what happened this morning? When you come running in the shop, I thought you'd been done for soliciting, not been to see one. <laughs> I just lost my temper. Still, he deserved it, pompous. You're not getting cold feet, are you? I'm getting chill blames. Divorce is so final. Why can't I be like Mum and Dad or you and Trevor? <laughs> Me and Trevor are not married. We live in sin. Not that there's been a lot of that lately. <laughs> Well, within working nights and me up so early in the shop, if they start Sunday trading, I may as well join a nunnery. I think I'll come with you. Well, what about this hunky PE teacher of yours, the Welsh one? What's his name? Roy Morgan Jones, the Tarzan of Merthyr Tidville. He's gorgeous, Debbie, but it's hardly the great romance. How can you love a man whose idea of conversation is this shoe up the wall bars? <laughs> 
I told him I wasn't feeling up to it last night and he asked for a note from my mum. <laughs> I've gone off, men. They're so juvenile. Well, Alec Callender wasn't, but... Alec Callender? Oh, that solicitor this morning. Nice, was he? He was older than Dad. I suppose that's why he was interesting. Oh, but he was so smug, Debbie. Divorce was something other people did. But he's got his wife just where he wants her. Same again. Yeah. We're going to be miserable. I may as well enjoy myself. <laughs> and a packet of crisps, salt and vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hello. Hello. I, I saw you in, re in reception this morning. At the solicitors. You were reading a magazine upside down. Must be these new Australian contact lenses. <laughs> Put the lines with a gin and tonic, please. So, uh, you were there to see Mr. Callender? Yeah, much good it did me. <laughs> what, was the law being an ass? More like a pain in one. <laughs> so how long have you been an interesting case? Oh, about, uh, 21 years. 21 years? What were you doing? Handling stolen rusks? <laughs> yeah, Alec Callender's my dad. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, that was a bit pathetic not telling me. I could have said anything and could have done me for libel. <laughs> Slander? Well, if you'd scrawled it on the door in that loo, that'd be libel. Oh, that'd be lunacy. It's the jets. <laughs> so, you're a lawyer too, are you? Uh, studying. I'm doing the licensing laws tonight. <laughs> and then it's thingy, calendar, doobery and calendar, is it? <laughs> not if I can help it. Divorcing bored middle class housewives isn't my idea of a good time. <laughs> right. Well, it's been nice meeting you. I can see the family resemblance now. <laughs> Look, I, I, I didn't mean. I only asked for a packet of crisps, I. You know that solicitor I told you about, Debbie? Well, they come in different sizes. How do you do? Look. Back there. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean you. Can I sit down? Oh, so you don't mind spending your evening with bored middle-class housewives? Who's middle-class? I, I don't know what to say. Your mum should sit you both down and tell you a few home truths. I wish she could. Probably couldn't get a word in edgeways. Yeah, mum died six years ago. Uh, not that that's an excuse for what I just said. Say that again. Your mum. Alec Callender's wife. Yeah, well, she, she was ill for a long time. Anyway... Oh, God, I feel awful. You feel awful? Why? You didn't do anything. It, Sorry, it was my Debs. fault. Oh, I don't really feel up to much. You stay here, I'll just get a bit of fresh air. Well, good luck in your room. I'll see ya. This is like one of those plays on BBC Two that start in the middle. <laughs> Carry on, it'll fall into place. Sh shall I go after it? You're talking about the Middlesex Junior 1,000 metre champion. She even runs to the dentist. <laughs> Mr. Henty recovers soon from those oysters. He's normally got such a resilient stomach. Oh, it weren't his stomach. It was his neck. Neck? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Oh! <laughs> On my first day, Mr. Callender took me for a ploughman's and a sausage. <laughs> Still, that was 23 years ago. Oh, I weren't even born then. Thank you, Hilary. <laughs> oh, hello. Fancy you coming back then. Hilary. Hello. Um, I wonder, could I have a quick word with Mr. Callender? I'm afraid he's not in yet. Um, Mrs. Angel, isn't it? Would you care to wait? Yes, OK, thanks. Mrs. Angel. I hope he hasn't had an accident. He lives on his own, you know. Yes, I know. Hilary, don't stare. 
<laughs> oh, at last. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's you, Mr. Henty. The warmth of your greeting is like a blast from a heat lamp, Miss Flood. My neck feels better already. Good morning, Hilary. Good morning. Mr. Henty, you're seeing your first client at 10.15. No, correction. My first client will be seeing me at 10.15. <laughs> I shall be seeing the northwest corner of my office ceiling. And, um, <clears throat> Mrs. Angel is here. Oh, well. Oh, hello. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you. <laughs> No, it's a damn squash injury. I just can't bear to see a ball going unsmashed. <laughs> um, could you just tell Mr. Callender I came and, um, just say, um, uh, you know, um, sorry. <laughs> oh, I do hope you'll be smashing again soon. Oh, I shall. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Ah, so that's Mrs. Angel. Can I get you a nice cup of coffee, Mr. Henty? Oh, you are sweet, Hilary, but my mouth isn't quite where it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd end up a bent solicitor. <laughs> Mrs. Angel? Mr. Callender, I've, I've just, just come from... from... Please, after you. I've just come from your office. My office? Whatever for? Well, to see you, of course. To apologise. Apologise? If anyone should apologise, it is I, Mrs. Angel. I was oddly tactless yesterday. Oh, I don't think you have anything... I've to... just come from your school. You weren't there. No, I wouldn't be. It's half term. You came to see me. To say I'm sorry. Really, there was no need. I didn't know. About your wife, I mean. Why should you? I don't burden my clients with my problems. Well, I think you should. I mean, I don't mind being burdened. Burden away. <laughs> You're an unusual young woman, Mrs. Angel. Not so young. Youngish. When you're my age, everyone seems young. You're not so old. Oldish. Perhaps it would be best if we go back to the office. That is, if you can bear another visit. Does that mean you'll still divorce me? <laughs> Mrs. Angel, it would be a pleasure. <laughs> Get divorce. Cold porter. Ah. <laughs> Marry the man today. Guys and dolls. You're walking too fast for me. No, I don't know that one. <laughs> Slow down a bit. You're walking too fast for me. <laughs> well, you're having a wee job with me, Mrs. Angel. Just a wee one. Is that because you were nervous? Just a little. So am I. Just a little. You are, Mr. Callender. Good morning, Miss Flood. Good morning, Della. Good morning, Mr. Callender. Two coffees, please, and no cake. Don't you worry about a thing, Mrs. Bullethead. This way, Mrs. Angel. So, a angel, Jonas Grimwood. <laughs> I, I... Mrs. Angel. Mrs. Angel. Please. I have no idea. I had no idea. It gives a whole new meaning to running a practice, doesn't it? 